So we're catching up on the Ultimate Evil Edition, really says it all, doesn't it? Uh, Diablo 3 coming to next-gen consoles and it's also coming to, to current-gen. We're just days removed from, from it being out there. Uh, people are already, so journalists are already getting their hands on it, I have heard. Uh, uh, to tell us first a little bit what, what sort of went into this, because you, you pretty much early on knew that you wanted to get this to next-gen console and getting it to console. Uh, wh what's different between this, uh, this one uh, compared to sort of original of bringing Diablo 3 to console this, this second time around? You know, a good question. I think it really boils down to the name is the Ultimate Evil Edition. Um, we're really proud of you know, the work that the team did to get, you know, sort of the epic experience that is Diablo mm. and how to translate that so it feels sort of hand-built for the for the console and the reception to the original one was was fantastic it was like you know people loved what we were doing in terms of the direct control the closer camera you know the what we now call loot 1.5 they really sort of influenced what loot 2.0 became for 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 reaper souls so when we really started thinking about okay how do we do so sort of the ultimate version of this um, it was really about you know how can we leverage first the power of the new console so both the playstation 4 and the x and the, the xbox one you know, great new systems. Each of them have really cool new features, like the PlayStation 4, the DualShock 4 controller. It's been a lot of fun to develop for, um, especially the trackpad. Again, if you played the Avalon console, you know there's a lot of inventory management, and the trackpad is just a cool way of, of being able to to do that. But really, what we wanted to do is, okay, take the core foundation that is that was the Avalon 3 on console, you know, and obviously add, you know, the Crusader and all the Reaper Souls content to it, you know, Act 5, Adventure Mode, we really wanted to really sort of celebrate what we feel is one of the most unique aspects of playing on console, which is a social experience. So not only can you play online, but the fact you can play with four players on the same couch, on the same screen, it's a very uniquely console way of experiencing Diablo. So we really wanted to take that you know, to the next level. And one of the pillars was share your adventures. So we really developed a lot of core features around this concept of like, okay, if you're playing together, we want to make sure you guys have a really fun experience, right? So one of the small changes we made is, you know, when you're playing on the same screen, um, in the original version, uh, the barbarian got all the loot because he's always up front killing stuff and looting stuff. And while that was fine, um, we felt, and the players felt as well, that it was a little unfair. Mm. So one of the small changes is now when you're playing same screen co-op, just like if you're playing online, loot drops on a per player basis. So if you and I are playing and you're the barbarian and you kill something, but it, you know, it, you, the monster drops an item for me, the minute you pick it up, it actually goes into my inventory, right? So now we can still be friends, right? And, and it, there'll be harmony um, in, in the world. Because it really is like, that thing is so great for the barbarian, but the other people, they, can, they tend to get, I mean, I've, I've, I've got into problems with my wife where I've played a game in this kind of thing where I've stolen all the loot and we just we couldn't continue playing it because it got, got to be an issue. See, we, we've heard so many of these stories and they were heart-wrenching. So we really wanted to make sure that we wanted to keep people friends. We wanted to keep people married. You know, it's really important that, you know, you're having fun playing uh, Diablo on console. So, I mean, that's one of the, the great sort of social features. We also added uh, player gifts. So if, if I'm playing, you know, my, you know, Legendary might drop and it actually might be a gift for you, so I can actually send it to you. We have a mail system as well, so we can be sort of emailing uh, these, these items back and forth. But it's a nemesis system that I think really takes the concept of sharing your adventures to a whole new dimension. So you know, in a game like Diablo, you die from time to time. Right? It happens, it happens to the best of us. But with Ultimate Evil Edition, there's a chance that every time the monster, when a monster kills you, that the monster's gonna level up. It's gonna open up a portal and step through the portal and go hunt one of your friends on your friend's list. So I die, the you know, monster spawns out of my game, spawns into your game, and the first thing you're gonna notice is, you know, the controller starts rumbling, the lights go down a little bit, the music comes up, and all of a sudden a portal opens up, and this badass of a monster, it says like Josh's nemesis will step through, and will try to kill you. Now if you kill it, great, because you're gonna get a reward, I'm gonna get a reward, it's gonna be happy. But if that nemesis kills you, it then opens out a portal and jumps into somebody else's oh. friend. So it's a great way of like, we may never play together because of our schedule. Sorry, our schedules, you know, I might live in, you know, one part of the world, you live in a part of the world, but Nemesis, the Nemesis systems allows us to share that adventure together and say, oh, look, that's his Nemesis. And I'm going to kill it and uh, hopefully it doesn't kill me. It's one of those things that sort of, 
can happen organically, th those kind of moments, but you're sort of, you've designed that sort of water cooler moment, if you will, that, that sort of thing that will get people talking. Absolutely, and that's, that's, that's part of sharing your adventures, right? We really want to make sure that we craft these moments that you know, become stories in of themselves. You know? I mean, finding a legendary is one of those moments, but we want to try to find more of these types of cool little sort of asynchronous interactions. All right, if we we're wrapping things up with sort of where you started, the, the title says it all, but it also sort of feels like you're putting a stamp on Diablo 3 with the Ultimate Evil Edition. Is, is, that, is that an interpretation that, that you want us to have, or is that not really what you want to have? No, I mean, I mean it, from day one, um, whatever platform you're playing, Diablo 3, Reaper Souls, we want to make sure it's a phenomenal experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's why we sort of take this staggered approach to the way we develop it. So we focus, focus, focus first on PC, making sure the PC version's awesome and people having a lot of fun playing. And then we divert our attention and say, okay, how can we make the console version feel, feel hand-built uh, for, that, for, that, for that platform, right? So we really want to keep that approach going. You know, fundamentally, whether it's a PC version or the console version, it's still the same Diablo experience. What really changes is how you play it. You want to play like at your computer, mouse and keyboard, you know, inches away from the screen, or do you want to play on your couch with four of your friends, you know, on your big screen TV? That's the choice we want to give you, the player. And, it, and it's, it's not a choice you have to say either or either, because I, I enjoy both, both experiences. Yeah, absolutely, and so do I. There's some times where I just want to be up there, you know, manically clicking on the mouse, and sometimes I just, you know, have a bunch of friends over, have some beers, play on the couch. It's, it's great having that, that choice. Right. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you.